Welcome to the New Life Stories channel. We hope you will have fun with us. Enjoy watching. Ashley had four children. The oldest was Paul, 12-year-old Steve, 7-year-old George, and 4-year-old Mary. She and her husband had always wanted many children, and had it not been for his early passing, probably would have had more. His heart couldn't take the strain and his work in the emergency services undermined his health. And one morning, he just didn't wake up. It had been two months since his death, and the allowance was barely enough to eat. After Mary was born, her husband suggested that Ashley quit her job and take care of the children and the house. His paycheck was enough for a normal life. Ashley had thought about it and agreed, and now she was happy to go back to her job. But it was already taken, and she couldn't find another one. Kids, she said over dinner, you're going to have to learn to live on your own. Daddy's gone, and I'm going to have to get a job to survive. So Paul, Steve, and George, you're the ones I'm counting on. Mary is still little, but she'll learn how to work the broom, won't you, little girl? She turned to her daughter. I know how to broom, and I can even mop the floor, she said proudly and turned up her nose. The next morning, after walking the kids to school, Ashley sat down to look for a job. There were plenty of jobs, but they required either a college degree or a lot of experience. One ad caught her eye. A cleaning company was looking for women. Ashley dialed the number. Come in, she was told. The address is in the ad. We'll talk on the spot. She didn't have to go far. The company was almost next door to her house. She was met by a friendly manager. We are recruiting staff to work in the homes of wealthy clients. I hope you realize that this is very responsible so we will have to run you through the databases. Yes, of course, I understand. Ashley shuddered. Even though she'd never had a criminal record, it wasn't very nice to have someone prying into your life. Well, you have to. Her husband had been checked out by emergency services, too. Your husband's a lifeguard? The manager wondered. She asked, why do you go to work then? He died two months ago, a heart attack. I am sorry for your loss. The girl made an entry in her diary. We'll call you back. Can you at least tell us about the conditions? What's the salary? What's the schedule? Ashley wanted to leave, but remembered the questions she had to ask. You can discuss the schedule directly with the clients, but the salary is like this. She wrote a number on a piece of paper and handed it to Ashley. Wow, Ashley raised her eyebrows in surprise. Is that per quarter? It's per month. The manager put the piece of paper away. Sometimes customers leave a tip, it's all yours. But if there's even one complaint, you'll be fined 50% of that amount. Wow, Ashley was shocked. But then she realized that, even with those terms, it would still be a good amount of money. Well, how long does it take to check your security service? Not long, smiled the girl. If all is well, tomorrow morning we will call you and give you the first client. You'll have to buy all the cleaning and detergent yourself, but we'll finance it. Ashley looked forward to the morning with anticipation and a little fear. No, her house was tidy, but she'd never cleaned a stranger's house before. Who knows what kind of nags or pigs lived there? Finally, the long-awaited phone call brought her out of her reverie. Ashley, good morning. You've been approved. You can start today. First day of client introductions. Find out if you're allergic to chemicals and cleaning products, schedule, and then call me tonight. I'll text you the address. The manager disconnected and immediately beeped the delivered SMS with the address. Well, Godspeed. Ashley looked in the mirror before leaving. The house at the correct address was two stops away. After admiring the architecture, Ashley rang the doorbell. There was silence. That's weird, she thought. Maybe she had the wrong address. She rang again. Finally, she heard shuffling footsteps. The door was opened by a short, thin woman in her seventies. Hi, I'm from the clinic. Ashley didn't get a chance to finish before the woman looked at her, shrieked, clutched her heart, and began to slump against the wall. Jesus, what's wrong with you? She dropped the bag and, picking up her hostess, dragged her into the hallway. Anybody home? She shouted into the depths of the house. But there was no answer. What's the matter? Ashley dragged the woman to the couch in the room, laid her down, grabbed the carafe of water on the table, filled her mouth with water, and blew on it. The woman moaned. Alive! Thank God! 
Ashley returned the water carafe to its place. Her gaze slid to the dresser next to the couch and caught the photograph that stood on it. She froze like a dumbfounded woman. The picture was of herself in a black frame with a mourning ribbon. Ashley felt the hairs on her head stir. Holy, holy, she crossed herself. Now she understood the fainting of the lady of the house. The woman stirred on the couch. Ashley waited for her to come to her senses. Is that you? The landlady's eyes were horrified. She started to move away from Ashley but pushed herself against the armrest of the couch and froze. But how? I wondered how. The guest had just as many questions. Are you alive? The woman stretched out her hand to make sure that it was not a ghost or a phantom. More alive than ever. But what is it? Ashley pointed to the photograph. We buried you a week ago. Who did we bury? The old woman groaned again and covered her mouth with her hand. Her eyes grew wide with fear and incomprehension. Come on, I'm alive and I'm not gonna die. I have kids to raise. Ashley's getting angry. What kids? You don't have any. The hostess shifted her gaze from Ashley to the photograph and back again. It was obvious they were the same person. Only in the photo, Ashley looked like she'd just come from the beauty parlor. A well-groomed face, unobtrusive makeup, stylish hair. The whole look was expensive, if not chic. Ashley, standing by the couch, looked a little tired, no makeup, her hair in a ponytail. Ashley poured water into a glass and handed it to the woman. She took it carefully and took a few sips. It's you, aren't it, Adele? The woman cried. Apparently, the shock of her nerves had been too much, and now the stress was pouring out in tears. My name is Ashley. I'm here from the cleaning company to do your place. Are you the landlady? No. The woman shook her head. My son Michael is the hostess, but he's not home right now. He's at work. What's your name? Ashley continued to stare at the strange picture on the dresser. Shelly. The woman calmed down a little and stopped crying. But you're the same person. You're the same person. Well, you can see it. I can see that, and I have just as many questions. Ashley nodded. But I came here to work. So what do we do? Do we wait for your son, or do you want me to tell you what to do? Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do it, and Michael told me to do it. He has a lot of free time because of his business. Shelley sighed. They discussed the job, the schedule, and made sure no one was allergic. They agreed that Ashley would start work tomorrow. What happened to her? She nodded at the picture. That's Michael's wife. I never thought it was possible to die from a bee sting. No one expected it. Everyone, everyone, no one, wailed the businessman's mother. Wow, I'm allergic to honey, Ashley marveled. Does Adele have parents? Of course she does. Shelley nodded affirmatively. Respectable people. Professors. Could you give me their address? Something tells me a lot of answers can be found there, Ashley grinned. I think they're going to have a stroke, the landlady said worriedly. They wouldn't. Ashley waited for the address. She wouldn't leave. Shelley had no choice but to write the coordinates on a piece of paper. Be careful, she admonished Ashley. The professors lived in a big house. I don't envy their cleaning lady. Ashley looked around the house and rang the doorbell. The bell rang immediately, as if it had been waiting for her. An elderly man stood on the doorstep. When he saw Ashley, he turned pale. Peter? Who is it? Came from the back of the house. Peter couldn't utter a word. Like a fish, he just opened his mouth and screwed up his eyes. Well, why don't you say something? Who's there, coming? A woman, the same age as the owner, came to the threshold. She also froze. Ashley was really afraid they were both going to have a stroke. Okay, calm down. I'm not Adele. I'm Ashley. She held out her open passport to them. No way. The woman backed away. Her husband followed her, opening a passage into the house. Shall I come in? Ashley took a step toward the couple. They nodded and stepped aside. Ashley stepped in, closing the door behind her. Shall we talk? She glared at the owners. The woman pointed to the room. The three of them went in and sat down. Ashley sat down in the chair next to the table. The go to work. It was the same picture that was on the dresser in Michael's house. Ashley and the landlord looked at the woman expectantly. It was obvious she was frightened by what was happening. I grew up in an orphanage. Ashley helped start the story. We were young, almost penniless students. The landlady put her hand on her husband's knee as if seeking support from him, but he didn't move. When I found out that there were going to be twins, I was frightened. 
We were starving ourselves, and now we were having twins. But I couldn't abort. Peter wanted children, she continued and looked at her husband. He remained silent, sitting stone-faced. I didn't tell him about the twins. When the babies were born, I kept one of them and wrote a waiver. Tears came to the mother's eyes. I tried to forget about it, never looked for a second daughter. And what criteria did you use to choose who's who to keep and who to take? Ashley grinned. One had a defect, a conjoined pinky and ring toe on her right foot, lowered the woman's head. Ashley took off her shoes. The man shuddered. The two toes fused like Siamese twins. I'm so sorry. The grieving mom was already sobbing profusely. Peter, Ashley, I'm so sorry. I think I'll go. Ashley stood up and headed for the exit. She felt sick to her stomach and soul, like she had swallowed a toad. Wait. Peter caught up with her on the porch. I didn't know anything, did I? I really didn't. It was just as much of a surprise to me. Please don't disappear like that. I've lost one daughter, ha, but I think I've gained another. I don't know how to live and look at my wife now, but please, let me be involved in your life at least for now. I'll think about it. Ashley replied sharply, but then softened after all. Well, if you'd like, you can come visit us. She dictated the address and left without saying goodbye. The whole thing just didn't make sense to her. Parents she'd never met. A sister she'd only heard about after she died. Life had taken its toll on her. No, she had no regrets. And if her husband had been alive, she would have been perfectly happy. And now everything has changed, and she doesn't know what to do either. When she called the agency, she wanted to turn down her first clients, but the manager wouldn't let her get a word in edgewise. How good of you to call. We were contacted by your clients. They urged that you come in to see them as soon as possible. And what do they want? They didn't say. Annoyed Ashley inquired. No, I wasn't notified, the manager replied angrily. Ashley went back to Michael and his mother's house. The door was opened by the owner himself. He was a tall, broad-shouldered man with serious eyes. A wisp of gray hair stood out as a bright spot against his dark hair. Coat and a figure like my late husband's, Ashley noted to herself and blushed. Hello, come on in. My mom warned me I might have a stroke. Ashley walked through the house. Shelley had already recovered from her first shock and was tending to the chores. Have a seat. Tea? Coffee? Michael sat down across from her and looked intently at his guest. One face indeed. I was very much looking forward to meeting my wife's doppelganger. Indeed, Ashley grinned. The circus is free. Well, why would you do that? Michael was confused. I didn't mean to offend you. It's just that it's not every day you meet people so similar. Haven't your father-in-law and mother-in-law called you yet? She wondered. No. Michael was just as surprised as she was. Should they have? Apparently, they're working things out. She shrugged and told him everything she'd learned from her mother. Michael thought for a moment. I guess it's fate. Of all the addresses at the agency, they gave you ours. I'd really like to get to know you and your family better, if you don't mind. Why would you want to do that? Ashley looked at Michael absent-mindedly and her heart shook. I don't even know how to explain. He rubbed his forehead, but I feel like it's necessary. To whom? Ashley shrugged again. Everyone, said the businessman like a cutoff. It had been a year since Ashley had crossed the threshold of the house. In that time, Grandpa Peter had gotten to know all of the grandchildren and had become a welcome guest in Ashley's household. Michael's long courtship and help had made her feel comfortable, and gradually, the children too. Only with her mother, Ashley could not find a common language. Resentment prevented her from forgiving her. She understood and didn't rush her daughter. But life was long, and things might get better, 